on it um so i think uh, i am going to send a note to everybody that we are meeting now but i don't think many people will join uh but that's okay at least um on the agenda front i was chatting with uh, nikolai um and also with um, prem uh, fred so at least one topic seems like needs immediate attention especially uh the ensm uh the rational being like we're going to have uh, panels and talks in um uh ons right so certainly the question will come for example how does nsm work with onap at a high level we can say it's all complementary right uh but then hey a precise answer will always be so much i mean spot on like basically hey here we go here is a document on the top or thought process how these work together and same with i mean prem is also driving the odl demo uh that will also help a lot in sort of you know putting all the pieces together at least uh, my thought process we should just and nikolai pointed that uh, there is actually a nice document already in progress inter domain nsm it's just that you have to uh, you know tie several pieces together um and i thought that could be a good topic for today and if there is anything else also we should look at uh, yeah i i do agree a bit i i was trying to find the exact spec where we find it uh, uh, so not a related thing but uh, frederick and uh, other so uh i have shared with the permission with all so should i share it at a google group level what are your thoughts frederick uh, ability to add uh, manage the sh sharing uh, make changes mm, let's let's hold off on that just for the moment um, okay so at least i have given to bunch of folks for example ed uh, jeff ramki um and i can probably add nikolai also to this list thank you yeah cuz my yeah. my my main concern is it's not that i don't trust anyone in the community yeah, i think any anyone in the community at this point will be okay but there's two things that i think of one of them is uh the community as it grows much more than the chances of running across someone who's malicious is high higher mm -hmm. and also I, i also worry about bots you know trying okay. to spam over calendar agree agree so i think at least for now we'll just uh, limit it to a uh, few of us and, yeah so nikolai i'll add your uh, vmware id um yeah please so it should be uh, let me find it from my thing uh have i have put my name and email on today's uh, meet minutes okay so I'll, i'll i'll pick it from thank you so one thing one question uh, 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 ramki is uh, uh, should we park it or should we have it later because uh, this would be beneficial to all our discussion um, no so um um so prem let's at least kick it off sure um um you know i'm not sure we'll able to conclude but at least uh, have a thought process there and mm -hmm. you know basically say here is a draft spec for review but at least uh, i mean all the key folks are here right so i mean i know it is missing but um, at least let's get it moving i i mean i talked to nikolai uh, like just 12 hours before i mean he sure. pointed me to a nice a nice spec in progress i put it on the chat for everybody so at least we can make some progress i thought sure i mean i'm not trying to say we have to conclude here but at least uh, a thought process yeah um okay uh are we how how say i mean uh, is everyone here at least uh, have some idea of what's written in this spec or do we want to go through it what would be the i think uh, nikolai if you could sorry yeah go ahead Robert. yeah yeah makes sense nikolai i think uh, if you can i mean you are the one of the key contributors right if you can please uh, give us a 
overview where we are i think you have the link in the chat window share that and then we can quickly take it from there yeah well, let me see if i can share this no no you you are in the yeah yeah it's right in the uh, chat as well we can double click and share I guess you see my screen already. Yes. Okay. So this uh, this was uh, uh, this was started by it a couple of okay maybe maybe two months ago I don't I don't remember, but it's quite old and it will I mean people were very active in it in the beginning but then it kind of got stale, but um, I do agree with Ramki that we need to kick off something and. Um, this uh, use case uh, call uh, sounds like like kind of a good place to start this discussion discussing something. Um, I don't know, Fred. We don't have any specific procedure of how we pr process through the specs because we have quite a bunch of them in, in our issues already, and not really removing this but i think that this one is is uh, really interesting and important so so this uh, this for 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 a starter this actually uh, tries to discuss uh, the inter domain network service mesh so um, it's not really about ensm but i think that it lays the ground and if there is some conclusion and agreement on this and even implementation we will have somewhere to step and to move forward for ensm so I think that it's important to to understand and finalize this first before we go further. Um, so um, I don't know. It starts with a quick uh, a quick uh, a reminder of uh, what it how it looks like. So essentially, um, in this picture, we say that the current registry holds network services, network service endpoints, network service managers. Um, this is the way that we we keep uh, keep the, this is actually our central storage central information storage for um, uh, for a single cluster now of course when you go to i'm not sure what was discussed here but essentially um let me see where ah, so when you go when you do multi-cluster uh the proposal that was uh uh, introduced here is to use some um, so it's uh, it's shown DNS here um, I think that it should be more or less some form of um, service name resolving not really uh, specified as DNS but let's say that for the purposes of uh, just having some concrete example of what it might be uh, Let's use DNS. We have some discussions going on here on the site, so um, this was already or no, already discussed more or less. So the the overall idea is that the services uh, have uh, um, the 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 client would be asking for a network service. I see it here that the sentence kind of gives a very good explanation with the name of form secure internet connectivity dot example dot com. Uh, and then the, the, the idea is to be able to resolve the services cross clusters this way, uh, mapping uh, um, a service to a domain name uh, and uh, be able to, I think that uh, it was uh, proposing to use service uh, records, SRV records to discover services. Yeah, uh, SRV records for the NS registry on that domain. Um, so, um, I don't know what more, I mean, I I didn't read that recently, but that's at least more or less the, the, the idea here. I don't know how I can zoom this, uh, but um, um i don't know prem do you, do you do, do you do you have any uh, i would say comments on your side in terms of i know that you are already implementing something along the lines of connecting to different worlds or at least to different yeah. uh, network service domains whatever that form is but uh, sure. it's still kind of separation yeah so, so let me probably uh, give a quick uh, update on what is happening um 
Um, so our intent is essentially to link Open Daylight with uh, Network Service Mesh. Yeah. And uh, as part of it, there are two parts to it. One is uh, Open Daylight invoking NSM services. And the other one is NSM uh, treating Open Daylight to be uh, ENSM and invoking mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the mm-hmm. services. Right. Okay. Uh, we are done with the first thing, which means what you have done is, uh, in case of Open Daylight, there is a pro, uh, there is a module called uh, uh, JSON RPC, uh, which essentially invokes you to host any application uh, outside Open Daylight and invoke the RPCs that are present in that. Okay. So what we have done is uh, we have uh, 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 basically developed a GN, uh, sorry, uh, 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 gRPC stub, and uh, and then we define these services as yang model the moment you feed in a yang model automatically those uh, rpcs will be visible with an open daylight right okay so now uh, what we have done is to start with we have taken the icmp responder and then we have uh, looked at what is the rpc calls that are present in icmp responder and okay. then we have defined it as yang which means in uh, open daylight uh, you will see this as uh, rpc endpoints we invoked it and then a basic thing is uh, working, which means uh, ICMP responder in a way got a few things, but uh, we are we are just uh, still away from having it to call it as end to end, right? Uh, now, moving on to that of uh, the other part, which is essentially invoking open daylight uh, uh, or treating open daylight as ENSM, I had few questions. Um, so the first question is, for example, when we talk about ENSM, um, you can essentially treat uh, or develop a gRPC uh, shim layer around any of it. It can be a physical device, it can be o- ODL, it can be anything, right? And then uh, uh, invoke those uh, 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 services because that's going to be, uh, for example, that uh, proxy would essentially register with that of the, uh, it can be DNS or it can be the uh, Kubernetes registry. And then it can essentially, uh, 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 or an client can invoke this uh, or an NSM uh, um, or a NSC can invoke these uh, uh, calls, right? But the problem is, uh, we, um, I mean, what I foresee is there may not be any data plane related stitching that would happen because they are in different uh, 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 world or different domains. Okay. Um, so what I foresee is with ENSM, I foresee only the control plane integration and not the data plane integration. That is one. Second thing is, even if it's going to be data plane, we would need to probably look at a VLAN to VXLAN type of mapping to re- achieve it is what I, I was I was thinking, but I wanted to validate with you and the rest of the team. So maybe Prim, uh, probably it's worth breaking down the flow. So, um, so let's finish the control and regarding data, I know like a seamless interconnection may not be possible, but even in typical deployments today, um, inter-vendor, multi-vendor scenarios, typically the starting point is always a VLAN. I think it's not a bad start at all. I mean, even if we can accomplish that VLAN interconnect, it's, I think, fantastic. Uh, that was at least my read on the data plane. Yeah, so, but again, um, VLAN also, right, we have to look at how the stitching would happen. Uh, uh, it's, I mean, the uh, view I have is essentially a, a very very like a ten thousand feet view, and uh, uh, we we may need to when we get into the uh, 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 nuts and bolts, we need to see what whether it's possible or not. So that is where I'm I'm struggling to connect the dots. Yeah. So uh, if you uh, do you um, so do you have this sort of written up by any chance, Prem? What you're what you're describing this one? Uh, no, not to the details. I have whatever explained. I just have slides that shows. Oh, slides, can... slides are fine. If you have slides, that's also we'll just go through the slides. Not a problem. And we have yeah, the was... other nice slide from Nikolai also yeah, I here. Think, I think Nikolai has it. Yeah, this is the same thing. I was Perfect. Referring. Yeah. Yeah, and I was trying to, to, yeah. to, to find something that illustrates our discussion. Yeah, yeah. so I've added ODL here in my slide and then I had put it as a GRPC. That's the only difference between the slide. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's talk about yeah. No, I think we, yeah, we will. We will yeah. The uh, hey guys, funny here. Um, in the absence of ODL or any other SDN controller, what is the role of ENSM? Is it a component that runs on every node of Kubernetes? 
Oh. So anything external to uh, NSM, it can be a physical device also. We treat it as a ENSM so that it can so, talk natively to NSM. I see. So Prem, it's basically an agent running on the individual element that is probably actually achieving the data plane or control plane. So a good way to think about it is um, instead of thinking of it in terms of ENSM versus PNSM or or so on. Like yeah. you really understand it, you have to look at it from the high level view of the protocol. Yeah. So what it does is when you run the uh, the protocol, there, there's two there's there's two main ones in this scenario to think about. So one of them is the client, like a Kubernetes style client to a to the network service manager, and that goes typically that's called the NSC. Yeah. And, uh, and then, oh, actually, it's, it's three APIs. So we have, so we have that one. The second one is the NSM manager to NSM manager, and the third one is the NSM manager to the network service endpoint, which uh, reuses, which should reuse, or is very close to the same API as the NSC to NSM, just in the opposite direction. So when you start looking at these, these two main classes, these two main APIs, then um, the NSC, NSC to NSM is primarily concerned about how do you get a local mechanism uh, into it and what network service are you, are, do you want to work with and some, some labels. Uh, and so when you start to deal with things that are outside of Kubernetes, that NSC uh, label doesn't make as much sense. And so in that scenario, that's it's begin. That's when you can start to look at things like, um, uh, like when you look at the NSM to NSM. So we'll use a case of like Open Daylight as an example. So suppose Open Daylight were to expose a the and the network service uh, manager's APIs, it, NSM to NSM APIs. Then uh, we call it an ENSM just to give it a name for people as a as a pattern. But that protocol is the same as if it was like a Kubernetes uh, NSM talking to another Kubernetes NSM. So there's there's no difference in that style. The the difference is that when the ODL based or SDN based NSM receives that particular request, there's no network service endpoint for it to reach out to. It, it is the SDN, and simultaneously, if it needs to make connection out, it needs to begin a server. It doesn't begin with an NSC. It begins with the uh, with the SDN itself making a determination to invoke the NSM based uh, APIs and whatever mechanism it sees fit. So, so when we talk about ENSM. We're typically talking about something that is non Kubernetes related that exposes the NSM API, the Network Service Manager, NSM to NSM API. Yeah, got you. Uh, but there's not there's there's no after that it's to us, it's a, it's a, it's mostly a, a black box at that point. Like you've implemented the APIs, we've sent things to you, you send things to us, and the contract is fulfilled. D does that make sense? Yeah, per perfect, Fred. Fred, uh, thanks for the detailed explanation. Yeah, uh, I, I get it. It's, it's like a NSM wrapper, but the internal implementation is, is really up to that particular implementation a, a good example was odl that frame was explaining yeah it makes sense now yeah. thanks guys the, the um uh, the um so just on terminology maybe is it probably better called like a proxy like it's basically proxying mm -hmm. or uh, you know that function right so it's not like an exact nsm implementation like where you have the nsm uh, on each node but more of a proxy where you connect you which so, abstracts the uh, service. The proxy would be this one. Uh, I don't know if you see, I should be sharing, I guess. Yeah. Yes, you are sharing that. Yeah. So uh, essentially the proxy, it talks, I mean, if we if we get the, the this nice explanation by Fred uh, about the API, so essentially the proxy talks, uh, uh, the NSM API both sides, if you see this. While the ENSM talks uh, uh, NSM API only on one side, on on, on the ah, other side, it okay. talks something specific to the SDN hardware, whatever you're doing there. Uh, so, um, yeah. 
Okay. Sorry, okay. The, uh, the, the PNSM is uh, is a more advanced pattern. So these are all about patterns. Mm -hmm. And so in this scenario, you see there's no data plane. So it's actually making a call out, and uh, that oh. whatever NSM two is data plane is what gets provided. But so why have the PNSM? The PNSM is able to augment the uh, the NSM to NSM calls and inject other things, and it also can be something that you can centralize uh, decisions. So instead of using the distributed NSM to NSM uh, patterns, you can stick a PNSM there to do something that is uh, that is more centralized. So for example, if you want to do something like um, you wanted to pick a route based upon uh, some status of your SDN, and, uh, and instead of trying to do that from a distributed sense where each system has little information, uh, you could, if you could have the PNSM's job be to uh, to select the route for you because it's been given a lot more information to do so. So rather than try to rather than try to share that information to every single NSM that's out there. So there's different patterns that that arise from this scenario where the PNSM doesn't actually provide the data plane itself, but is able to augment the request or the data plane in some way. Yeah, some form of centralized resources that can play a bigger role. Yeah. And, 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 and Fred, is it accurate to say that ENSM is more like a gateway NSM, where it is doing a gateway function between the NSM side of the world and the non-NSM side of the world? Well, we'll say it's both NSM uh, side, of, but we'll say that it's Kubernetes to like non-Kubernetes, or you could even yeah. have like non-Kubernetes to non-Kubernetes, like your, the ODL <laughs> yeah. example I gave could be going to Athena. <laughs> Right. Um, yeah, I think yeah, I think gateway is also a very reasonable description. Or I mean, basically, depending on the audience, many people understand the term gateway well. Or people often other technology could be external controller. It depends on the audience. I think yeah, we can explain it. But I think I think what the function is well said. Like you know, uh, proxy is like advanced functionality, whereas this is more of a you know sort of a translation, right? Correct. Yeah, I think gateway is a, a good a good term for it at, um, for for most for most uses. Um, I I get a, I get a little bit concerned that um, that there might be some non gateway style functionality, but uh, but I think it I think this is a, a good term for this. Like it it helps people understand. Uh, yeah, maybe we should bring this uh, up uh, on the documentation call because you know yeah, people there are very very you know specific about picking the exact word. So <laughs> yeah, because yeah. also uh, passionate about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's a good yeah, thing. And, yeah, and the area where we're a little bit hung up, and I don't know if it's an issue or not. We can leave it to them to decide. Is like, can the gateway make a call out and like call out oh. to other things? So that, that's why I'm wondering. Like, is it, it gateway uh, to me feels like it implies a bunch of inbound connections that it terminates? But what if it's the one making all the connections outbound? Like, it, is it still a gateway? And may, maybe it is. Uh, I, I actually don't know. Yeah, because it's uh, absolutely valid that you have your clients here on this side, and they reach out to services which are registered in the Kubernetes. I mean, this is exactly this Kubernetes be... might be my uh, my firewall cluster. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <do> firewalls. <laughs> so, um, um, so this is very good. So, um, regarding implementation frame, uh, Sorry, I mean, I just need to support for a few minutes. I'll come back. Uh, give me. Yeah. Um, I can probably answer that question and then I'll uh, take it. Take it. Um, so, with respect to implementation, uh, we are planning to demo it uh, next week in ONS. Uh, so, it's work in progress. Every, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, any, uh, on this, like, we'll be, ta we'll be doing both, I mean, so basically no, the ENSM. Path. No, hmm? it wouldn't be ENSM, it's just the reverse path, which is essentially ODL invoking. And then we will, after that, uh, we will probably start working on the ENSM. Yeah, but but essentially, uh, if you are talking some form of NSM API, mm -hmm. which it seems like you do, maybe we can call it like mini or micro <laughs> yeah. version alpha, I don't know, something. 
yeah in fact uh, that so, brings in another important discussion what do we call when these external entities wants to call uh, for example i don't i don't think it, it that should be a problem because it's a client at the end so, of the day they can always yeah. invoke it yeah that is not a problem yeah yeah i thought it so, was um, an prem sorry i somewhat don't understand the reverse how will the reverse even work i am little confused okay. what does the reverse mean? okay let me tell, explain you okay so for a moment in this diagram just assume it's open daylight or some sdn controller okay okay, yeah. okay. now and some let's assume that it is wanting to uh, it's exposing a firewall here here right uh, this is the firewall right the part that wants a firewall so uh, what what uh, uh, what open dale wants to use it is it wants to invoke this firewall right uh, so which means uh, what open dale would essentially need is it needs to access the api endpoints yeah right uh, so what it will do is it will essentially uh, 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 for now it is static in nature because what happens is this particular uh, 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 um, firewall would have exposed those uh, endpoints um, uh in uh, and what we do is we take that proto uh, 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 in information and then create a yang file um and then uh host it along with open daylight right uh, so the user of open daylight would essentially browse through he would see this uh, as an in, uh, as a, a, a rpc endpoint uh, okay. he would invoke it and then it will uh, land on uh, uh, on the uh, um, nsm and then the whole uh, call flow get invoked but you, you don't talk uh, the kubernetes api for requesting for crds you have this more or less statically defined somewhere yes that's okay. right that's right okay. yeah so we have right. some some lightweight version of this part here absolutely like, absolutely okay. so that is okay. more like we basically translate all the endpoints to a yang model okay 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 right okay. so in fact i was having a discussion with uh, frederick last week in fact what we can do is we can make it as open config yang so that uh, uh, in a way on the long term we can always say that nsm is compliant with open config yang and then start implementing those so, services um, uh, so if i understand right prem all that you don't support is the dynamism so basically the whole uh, setup right so for example the service setup nsm One, two, yeah. three, like from three uh, yes. calling you. That's the only part you don't set support. Yes, because that's yes. there, right? Yes, yes, you're right. So as yeah. a next step, what we need to do is we need to, if we to add dynamism, we need to essentially look up for a particular service, uh, then get the endpoints, convert it to Yang, and then the moment you convert it into Yang, it will be available as RPC endpoints. From then on, you would invoke it. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So guys, again, one basic question: the NSM to NSM that we show here, mm -hmm. they're also driven by the CRDs, right? Um, no. 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 This no. No. This is a, a gRPC. It's a protobuf described uh, API. True, but the, that gRPC protobuf uh, defined mm -hmm. API, the model is still described in a CRD, right? No, no. Okay. No. No. The CRDs are used um, as we sh as we seen here in the in the other document in the beginning. I don't know if you were at the beginning of the discussion, but essentially they describe the the service the, level uh, registry. Yes, for the network services, network service endpoints, network service managers. So these are yeah. the three components or kind of tables that we keep in effectively in uh, Kubernetes HCD and where we. keep the records for our services and points and managers i see okay yeah bear with me my dumb question is why is nsm to nsm not um, defined by, uh, again via crds you know i i know the the protocol and cap is uh, was there a good reason why we like if you see what prem was explaining he's basically modeling those endpoints as yang and they become a rpc call away right uh, yes but i mean the 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 api i mean fred maybe maybe you have a better explanation here but uh, my explanation is that the 
protocol is is a little bit more than just describing the endpoints. I mean, you uh, the part of the protocol is negotiating between the two NSNs, for example, the VNIs that we use uh, for the VXLAN of the tunnel. So all these things, they're part yeah. of the, the negotiation here. So I, I'm not I sure if, if you can, involved. I mean, yeah, there's kind of negotiation going on. Uh, Fred, if you have a better answer. Yeah. Yeah, and so in terms of the CRD, we primarily use it as a uh, as a registry, and in fact, the registry itself is uh, is ex accessed through gRPC. We actually don't access the uh, the CRDs directly, so uh, so that that means that you're you can have something that's not part of Kubernetes or a non Kubernetes network. So the first part is that we want to be careful not to tie Kubernetes as the as the underlying required thing. And when you deal with CRDs, you, you're now bound to that. So, so we have that one layer, layer of abstraction. The other problem that you run into when you start looking at uh, uh, gRPC in this scenario, sorry, not gRPC, but when you start looking at the CRDs, yeah. is uh, we, we're designing this for, uh, for trying to gain like very high uh, scalability. And so if you look at any... NSM, uh, an NSM manager, it all it doesn't have to know about the entire world. It just has to know about its connections. Like, who am I connected to? What can what connections do I have? What remote, what, what remote mechanisms do I have? What local mechanisms do I have? What resources are they connected to? And so, uh, from a scalability perspective, that's okay from a from the distributed system. But when you start to scale out at much higher higher rates. Uh, we we don't want to start putting in status information or negotiations directly into the CRDs themselves because uh, etcd is already a strange resource in, in, in Kubernetes and so if we start to add in a high volume of connect of connections uh, into etcd uh, then we we will very likely run into scalability issues from the from Kubernetes with CRDs so we have to also be careful from from that aspect got you got you yeah i agree with the scalability aspects as well yeah that makes sense i was just wondering if there is a modeling language on the kubernetes side that can describe as for example the odl is defining it as a young you know uh, but that's okay you know a protocol level interface if it is well defined also that should be good good enough yeah, I'm. I'm not familiar with any modeling language at this point. So, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, that Yang gRPC can run over pretty much anything, right? It can. I saw yeah, 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 it yeah. can. So can... Yang is just a modeling, right? The payload part yeah. of it. If you use REST, it will become JSON. If you use gRPC, it will become protobuf, right? So, yeah, absolutely, you're right. You can transport Yang modeled objects on any. Interface, REST, gRPC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think gRPC is super lightweight. I think it's prone to be, I think now literally. Uh, uh, highly efficient, right? Highly efficient, yeah. Yeah. It's scalable also, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Sorry, guys. Yeah, uh, bear with me. No, no, uh, it's actually very good. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, in fact, I was hoping now, I think, so uh, just on the uh, probably frame, maybe one way to, if you're going broader and explaining this, I would actually say you are not actually reverse. You are doing something of a more static setup. Probably I thought maybe a better description because if you say reverse, then it sends, doesn't sell the, I mean, uh, I would say the, um, explain the value of your demo, right? All that you're doing is basically static and dynamic is just one step away, right? I mean, I would, I'm actually I tending to lost, think more, more that way. I think we lost Prem's audio. He probably stepped away. Oh, okay. Okay. He stepped away. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk to Prem offline on that. Yeah. No, but you're right, Ramki. You know, it's, that's a better way of explaining. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because I don't want to, I mean, there's so much value coming out of the effort he's putting. I don't want to devalue that. Right. By saying reverse means and people, okay, is it like not even fully yeah, done? No, all that we're doing like is static, phase, right? There's one implementation of ENSN. That's another way. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And we should put out this slide and then maybe, and we can even talk about some of the APIs, right? Yeah. 
So uh, if we get back to the original question by you, Ramki, so essentially we have to put somewhere here own up. I guess that, that, that would be a big question that people are going to be interested in. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is, like we can say, like, um, um, I mean, basically uh, own up or it could be OSM or whatever. I mean, all they need to implement is this ENSM service, right? So basically, um, you know, as part of their implementation, and there we go, right? So basically, uh, uh, expose um, NSM uh, APIs, and I think you're pretty much all set. And we can say, hey, here's a simple starting point for you on the APIs. So, you know, basically, if you're doing VLAN based, you can just start there, and we can cover the predominant set of use cases. I can, uh, let me put together some slides around it. I mean, just basically take this, I'll put some story around ONAP. I want to try to generalize if possible to other efforts, ONAP and OSM and everything. So Ramki, um, similar to what Prem is doing from Lumina, from VMware point of view, do you guys have any good um, or clear idea on how VMware use cases will fit into NSM? So at least, um, um, one idea, this is uh, from our side, is not about ENSM, but um, just uh, delivering the interconnect itself, like for example, within a cloud or a cross cloud, delivering the interconnect itself using NSXT, right? I mean, NSXT as a CNI, sort of, that's what we have in mind. But you Got just you. have to put it together. Got you. So then that will more fit into an SD-WAN style use case, right? Correct. Yeah, SD WAN. Correct. SD WAN would be a good use case, or it could be just service chaining. It's pretty generic. Yeah. Sure. But basically, it. come in and solve the uh, multi network problem, multiple network interface problem. Right. Right. So generically speaking, a distributed edge. Uh, one of the exactly. Edge. Yeah. Edge cloud. Yeah. Edge yeah. The use cases and... we have been talking about. Correct. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. So um, on this. Um, <clears throat> Uh, can we take, uh, I mean, uh, some of the NSM, uh, I mean, basically the NSM protocol, right? Take at least one case such as VLAN, VXLAN and talk through a little bit and see if something can be done on the data plane. What do you guys think? At least one case, I'm, I want to go to the simplest one and see on the data plane side if there's some sort of negotiation possible, right? And talk through a little bit. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I get the, the question. Uh, no. So uh, what I was thinking um, was Nikolai was like basically take the NSM gRPC APIs, right? I mean, take a look at them and then focus on one, like the simplest one, the VXLAN VLAN case, right? And then yeah, and then I see whether we can. Trying to find where I'm not sure I can find it. Uh, Fred, do you? where the API should live on uh, the registry remote. Uh, yeah, probably this one remote. Yeah, take a, take a look at that. I, I usually just look for the dot proto in the uh, search and then I look for the right one. Yeah, network service. What is this? Uh, service request, but yeah, this is the request, not the... Uh, Disconnect connection context to local is so this would be the no, this is the monitor cross connect. No, yeah. Okay, okay. I, uh, do 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 you want to do this now? Because okay, we have fifteen minutes, but uh, yeah, if we, I mean, I, I was just thinking because the data plane. I do think that simple VLAN is possible. Uh, at least I would like uh, since the team is here. At least sort of see what is possible because Are you talking that would about go a long the, way. The, the data plane because the data plane is is, is the different thing. So the data plane uh, API is uh, is. The, this one here, so the NSM talks to the data plane. So this is, this is the the, the, the data plane. Okay. okay. Oh, so okay. So in this case, so basically, no, I, I wanted to look at the control plane because that is where the V. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's let's. Uh, 
my my use case is super simple all i want to do is like when a new connection comes like i want to assign a new vlan to it i'm not even getting to vxlan very simple can a new vlan be assigned to it and both sides agree to the same number and go program it like you know a new enterprise customer comes comes up new vlan oh, and done boom so, can i so, and then can i stretch it on both sides so i have That's, a i think a good start oh, sorry i'm back so i have a question so uh okay so when we talk about data plane i was trying to draw parallel between our uh, ns ns some yeah, uh, i mean data planes of uh, same domain right uh, but when we so essentially you inject those interfaces into the pod and then make it work right whereas the same may not be applicable when we talk about ensm because they are quite disjoint world um so in this case uh, we have to probably look at the use case in a different way right uh, because even though the tunnel is there but uh, uh, one for example if it's a vxlan tunnel one side is essentially being injected onto the uh, pod but the other side uh, i may or i may not have the ability to inject those for example so prem uh, let me make it super simple for you super duper simple like forget so basically take a pod which is implementing srabov right forget all the overlay everything srabov so what happens is when a new enterprise customer comes in we add a new vlan right so what we do is on the srabov nic side we add a mac address with the vlan so that packets can be directed right but and you pick a vlan number let's say 100 right and now on the uh, switch side we want to make sure that same vlan is being programmed that's all we are looking for it's really simple i'm not even getting to vxlan let's start small Okay. i mean be both agreeing to the same vlan and going and programming for a new enterprise customer very simple let's start small okay then we can build on it like build on vxlan all these things can be easily built once we have something basic running so all that we need to do is in the control plane side uh, make sure that we agree on some vlan number like sort of i think right now we go ahead i think we have some sort of assignment right happening like you know how we agree so is that possible in control plane or what is possible today so that particular example ramki the vlan mm-hmm. is very localized to that physical port over there it's it doesn't need to be globally unique you can call it oh, a yeah, exactly attachment exactly. point yeah. right so the port comma vlan uh, on the physical network side need to match up with your srv mac comma vlan correct so there are two cases um, um funny i was thinking one is the l2 l3 l3 you spot on uh, you know that's an easier one to tackle but l2 means then you have to have a global vlan i mean id but l3 yeah spot on like very simple it's a local vlan significance and that's it that's all that even that's correct. a very good starting point correct even for l2 ramki we shouldn't assume the vlan is global for overlapping vlan use cases you know when you go into brownfield deployments you will uh, get into scenarios where the vlan number is already used you know but doesn't but you might want to fit into uh, a different broadcast domain you know as a result a particular vlan number on a given attachment point could get connected to a broadcast domain which is using different vlan numbers at other attachment points you know so it's very important for multi tenancy i'm presuming that's uh, important goal here as well correct so basically you're right i mean we need uh, so the brownfield would be more of we need definitely some sort of vlan translation and all those right even in the l2 case that's correct yeah but uh, just yep. uh, don't you think that we need uh, the nsm uh, control plane to be aware of uh, what uh, uh, vlan tagging is available and uh, or the vni the vlan numbers available outside or something like that for a global value yes it needs to be aware absolutely you know but if you model this particular example as a local attachment point from the pod to the physical network uh, then you know uh, still the nsm needs to be aware it needs to manage that local namespace uh, and, uh, and and kind of do the mapping between that local namespace and the global namespace so it needs to be aware um, in in short you know it, it's just that there are more details involved we, we could start with a, a simple simpler simple example where uh, 
Yep. The local label is a global label as well. You know, we can first solve that and then, yeah. Correct. That's sort of what I was thinking. Funny and and I mean, L three is now probably the more common deployment model, right? And finally, it will be probably more local, simple local and layer three. Unfortunately, Ramki, you know, I do. Uh, I have been seeing a lot of layer two use cases also. Um, yes, layer three is needed, right? But they do at a service level. They are still asking for layer two. So. Sure. No, sir. I'm not. <laughs> Now we should we should definitely look at both. Yeah. 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 So. Excellent. So uh, with that in mind, so basically, um, uh, so Nikolay Fred from sort of the control plane perspective. what is there some numbers being negotiated let's say all we are looking for is simple vlan connectivity between two endpoints or what gets negotiated so i mean the, i know the type gets negotiated think yeah i think that 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 uh, uh, the general rule of thumb that we use uh in nsm is that the Uh, initiator uh, just asks for things, and then the decisions are taken on the um, kind kind of termination side, like uh, on the. I see. It would be the the, the, the endpoint side. Yep. There, there's a nuance to that. Um, the initiator can set uh, some boundaries. Yeah. As well. Yeah, of course. So, um, for example, the initiator might say. Um, I, I support VXLAN, but please use one of these sets of parameters mm -hmm. uh, and set a constraint. And then the the receiving end, the, the endpoint, uh, or the one that would uh, would that would uh, receive the request, uh, can select out of that out of that list as well. So it's not like it's not like the the client has no say in it as as well. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the. Uh, So, so the, the initiator setting and the control. So basically, assuming these are all local, I said there is some local number generation. Just going back to the simple VLAN case. Um, so, um, but so how I, do we program the range, or how do we know? I mean, see, where see, do we about to start? How does that programming happen between the initiator and the uh, responder? So the protocol actually starts from here. Right, right. You have the this RPC code request, which holds the network service request, and it gets a c connection. Right. Uh, no, no. Um, uh, Nikolay, what I meant was we are talking about the range, right? The range to use. So how yeah, does yeah. that the endpoint know which range to use? How does that get programmed through will, the, the will, service? Or I will tell you. I mean, it gets. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so that would be negotiated here between the. uh the network service manager and the the the, the data plane it should be a configurable range uh, nikola so that's what i meant yeah that yeah. <laughs> so you know, where does that configuration come from yeah. yeah in general we should just push that to the administrator it's simpler for the yeah. design right we, just, we should just assume a range of x to y and we allocate Correct. value from that uh Yeah, there are scenarios, Nikola, where you know if you want to make that local namespace as global, uh, there will be scenarios where you'll get into conflict. So just leave it to the administrator. It's it's the other way. Um, yes, the uh, the the only thing is what what the administrator configures, and to the best of my understanding, the administrator would be able to configure the the data plane. Actually, so the uh, network service manager doesn't doesn't have the, the, the this notion from what I understand right. at all. Right, Nikolay. So it doesn't need to be a data plane aspect. It's just a configurable VLAN range, right? Um, I mean, not every VLAN number in that range will go into the data plane. Uh, it, it, it's just right. a namespace, you know, a range uh, that that is required for us to make yeah. this whole data plane work. Yeah. uh yeah I, i mean i think it should go into hcd that's what i mean you know um, yeah exactly it should it should i mean i mean ideally as part of the service i mean for i think each interconnect in the service is an ideal scenario minimally a starting point would be for the entire service then we can say for each connection in the service then we can have different ranges at the next level i think 
Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that we have something similar today, but yeah. it's there's no problem into initiating a spec and trying to to figure this out. And I'm yeah. sure that once we yeah, figure just, it out. Yeah. yeah, just to be on the same page, this is only for an SRIO use case, right? Whereas in case of a, a non-SRIOV, then it has to be a VXLAN to VLAN mapping. Yeah, so, we, yeah, yeah. So, they, and SRIOV with VNF is very common, right? Yes. Uh, frame, as you very well know. Yeah. yeah. No, I no, mean, I just wanted absence. to start small, very simple. <laughs> no, no, no. So, 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 guys, even in the absence of SRIOV, so, Prem, let's say you're doing non SRIOV, it's a regular interface to the underlay network. Mm -hmm. Even in those scenarios, you cannot assume that the VXLAN will start on the server. You know, there will be deployments where you will just do dot one q vlans to the underlay and the underlay will be starting the uh, the vxlan tunnel so to uh, the, the in general v, vlan way of signaling from the server to the underlay network uh, it, it will serve the purpose not just for sriov but even for the non sriov use cases just yeah i think uh, so one thing uh, what i wanted to probably discuss funny is that uh, in the non sriv cases right so today what happens is uh, the usage of vxlan makes it simple because you essentially inject uh, uh, one of the endpoints to um, the service and the other one to the client right yeah. um, because vxlan provides a uh, programmability right so yeah. but if you have to play the VLAN part, right? So VLAN essentially what happens is VLAN was essentially meant for a physical port, which means what I'm trying to say is uh, from a Kubernetes perspective, um, I cannot really uh, create a VLAN for a, for a, a service or a part, right? Uh, so uh, I, I see what you're saying. You're saying from an underlay as well as the overlay perspective. I was more looking at uh, the NSM from a VXLAN or overlay perspective, and yes. I assume that the VLAN, the no, underlay that's part. A good point. That's a good point, uh, Prem. The, from that point of view, a pod is basically looking for a subnet that it can insert itself in and participate in, right? That subnet in, in SRI use cases can map to a VLAN as an attachment point, or when let's say a vSwitch, which is doing VXLAN on the server itself. There also, if you think about it, the connectivity to the pod will will be some kind of a virtual port and that will i mean you can model it as a vlan or you can model it as a generic subnet uh, i understand that the vxlan will have to convert it to a vni right. uh, but interface to the pod you don't want to push vni also on the pod pod better be generic enough that it can operate in a let's say a segment routing environment or a vxlan environment or, or or anything like that right so you should generically model it as a subnet or a vlan that's how the pod will interface whether it's a physical switch it's interfacing with or a virtual switch that it is interfacing with hmm. what what i feel as still all these at lower level number of v of vlan attack all that one will be dependent on configuration at lower level. So I think at higher level, you should have some APIs or something to lower level, which one will make all these things transparent at higher level. That one will simplify the whole thing. That's what I see here. Yeah, absolutely. 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 And, 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 and Ramki, are you really seeing SRIO with uh, container pods, with VNFs? I know they are pretty prevalent, but with containers? Um, uh, we... Definitely something to, I would say, seriously think about. Uh, because, I mean, basically from a performance standpoint, uh, uh, you want to do the right thing, right? So, yeah, um, it's not but like as realize... prevalent as VMs. Right, but you realize, right, you have to load the SRIOV nick driver into the container oh yeah i know i i completely understand no it it, it, it doesn't come for free <laughs> you're right but um but the whole i think mobility the and flexibility of containerization kind of goes away you know that's why um i know I so it's almost like i think the other way also to think about it it's like uh, hey pod dies in the kubernetes world it doesn't matter it'll get why somewhere you else you need to inject the driver you don't need to inject i mean you 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 can hand out the the, the driver on the host and then just in, inject the linux interface mm -hmm. correct nikolay that's what i was proposing in my in our last meeting mm -hmm. uh, container should never see a pci interface well but, <laughs> 
it depends on what the content. I mean, if it's a, for example, some form of DPDK application, why not? No, even for a, uh, even if it's a DPDK application, you can interface with a vhost user or MMIF, right? Mm-hmm. It's not necessary. You need to have a PCI interface. The Polmo driver will run on a vhost user as well. Mm-hmm. It's a shared wow. memory interface that's far more efficient than uh, trying to walk through the PCI bus and understanding those, you know. I mean, the, the mobility of the... But the uh, shared memory comes with uh, the sharing issues, right? Funny, it's like, I mean, mm-hmm. I mean each, that has its own trade-offs, correct? It's not a full slicing. It's a zero copy. What do you mean? Not no, no, what I meant was the shared memory. It's not yeah. an exclusive shared memory for this container. It's basically, it's some shared pool across containers. So basically, you have to look at it that way, right? Correct. Yeah, that's the same problem when you have VMs in the picture and you have a DPDK-based implementation on the vSwitch. It's the same scenario, Ramki. Here, instead of VMs, now replaced it with containers. And the memory management you need to do, that's actually going to be a... Um, uh, a differentiating feature, um, uh, or, or if I may say, based on the SLA, based on the QoS requirements of a container, uh, you will have to do uh, a better memory management. Or, or, or but if you do uh, the full slicing with SRA, of course, the pain points are there. You have to expose PCIe. When you expose PCIe, but you get the full slicing. Right? That's another way to. I mean, so I'm not are, saying that's the best solution. Right, One right, another so. solution direction. So when I was having detailed discussions with Verizon, this is what we brainstormed. I said, look, do you guys envision the number of containers to be exactly number of virtual functions on a NIC? Let's say those those are going to be 256. Then, yes, you Mm -hmm. can go ahead with SRIOV, invest your money and so on. But if you will be having N number of containers or pods, which are, let's say, more than 256, more than the number of virtual functions, let's say they'll be in thousands. Then, you know, how do you, you, you just cannot map it to the hardware or a physical function or a virtual function, right? How do you solve that problem? So in those, and, and they do have such scenarios, not just the, that carrier, other carriers also will have that, you know, in that scenario, you have to do a muxing and demuxing. In that scenario, you will be forced to do some kind of a uh, buffer management between multiple containers trying to utilize a sa- single hardware resource. Mm. Mm. No, that, 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 that's a very fair analysis. And we also heard, I mean, I'm not saying the every number, the typical usage would be like maybe 100 pods, 100 unique pods per uh, per node, I mean, basically per host. Uh, this is, I mean, again, one reference point. I'm not saying this is the only reference point. But yeah, you're right. I mean, basically, we need a family of solutions. <laughs> Correct. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, depending they, on, and there are always trade-offs, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. Uh, other, yeah. other useful point I learned, uh, not from Verizon, but I can name the, uh, it's better I don't name them. But the point is, Let's say you're terminating the TCP and UDP on the container, meaning the destination IP is meant for the container IP. Then the number of connections there are going to be very large in number, right? Um, uh, And there will be large number of containers running on that server node as well. But let's say you're implementing like a firewall CNF. You know, you're really not the termination point for the IP, but you're a transit node, but you have some policies that you need to enforce on the traffic. They, in those kind of um, uh, VNFs or CNFs, uh, they don't see more than 256 on a per server. No, that makes sense. Yeah, so I mean, both scenarios are valid. And, and if and we don't need to over design on day one itself. So we could start simple with each CNF can have its own virtual function. We can solve that problem. Um, uh, and, and, and then go for the next one. If you guys want to keep it. Simple. Perfect. Yeah, we are almost uh, out of time. Sorry. I have to jump on to another call. Um, but um, just, um, so this is excellent. Um, uh, Nikolai, would you be able to share that uh, the nice slides you have? Um, yep. They're, yeah, okay, I will send them. 
Yeah, and I think this is very good. So basically, we have also now gotten much crisper than on especially the data plane, right? So at least we have, I think, a story lining up on the VLAN uh, case. And Prem, we were just chatting that probably for your messaging, I think you're doing much more than the backward initiation from ODL. It's more of really actually, you're almost there. You're doing starting with static connectivity. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. the only simple next step is dynamic. Probably that's a yeah. better way to position it. Yeah, I yep, I agree. Yep. All right. Cool. Thanks, Thank guys. you. Excellent. Thank you all so much. Thank you tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, so uh, I will uh, update. All we need to do is the, do the Google Calendar update, right? Correct? Yes, I have given the permission to update it, uh, Ramki. Oh, so awesome. Yeah, I will do. Uh, yeah. Nikolai, please share the slides. And I'll also start working on um, sort of bringing that uh, own app and ODL together. One app, sorry, other thing, other OSM together. I added the slides in the meeting minutes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Cool. Bye. Thank you very much.